there still. There we go. Hello. Hey guys, welcome to the Saturday Hukula webinar. Today is Saturday, March 30th, 2019, and we have Safira channeling for us. You can contact her through hukulo.org if you want a session or if you want to learn more about her. Safira, do you want to introduce yourself? And then we can introduce everyone else and talk about announcements and stuff. Awesome. Good morning, everybody out there, wherever you may be, and for those of us here. So I grew up in on Long Island, New York, and I lived on the West Coast for eight years. Then I lived in Germany for 20, had three children there and taught English. I was involved in different interreligious activities. And also I was involved in several different religions for the purpose of um, dialogue and peace through dialogue and coming to common ground. I was in Israel as well uh, on a peace mission there, very interesting experience. So I have a lot of experience with different religions and different metaphysical paths. And I have always tried to work on self-improvement my entire life. Um, and that's, I think, what we're all trying to do in different ways. And I started, um, I met Human Colony back in 2014. And I did some channeling at that time and for, for a while. And then I stopped and I've been sort of back and forth with that because of just life and being distracted by other things. Uh, so, but since August of 2018, I began channeling again on a regular basis. And I have a list of our galactic friends who come. Um, a lot of my healing is, a lot of my channeling, sorry, is uh, healing based and counseling based. It's not as heavy on the technical information as sometimes some other channelers get, especially those of you who know Jim Charles. So, um, but nonetheless, uh, it's still very beautiful and they like to come and share um, because they wanna give us a glimpse and some inspiration to keep moving forward ourselves into the next realm. Uh, which hopefully the earth will be embodying soon. That's what that's the idea. And they're there to help us along. And so that's what I do. And that's what I'm doing today. <laughs> so thank you, Temple. Thank you. And so if you guys haven't checked out uh, Human Colony, you can find more information at hukulo.org. And that's also where Safir's information is. Um, if you want to have a session with her or check more into what she does. Uh, it's always uplifting when she channels and we always get such amazing information that helps us just work out day-to-day -day stuff and help us keep the faith and uh, keep on trucking. Uh, you can become a subscriber for $10 a month and this allows you access to Saturday webinars with Jim. It also helps fund free opportunities for Galactic Light Language Hangouts where we can work on our channeling, our languages, and so much more. We can make friends. Um, and then we have one announcement. At the end of April, beginning of May, uh, Jim Charles is thinking about holding a galactic healing class, but he would like you to contact him again on the website. And he wants to see who is all interested and he's hoping to get at least 10 people. If there's more than 10, the cost would be very reasonably priced for everyone. And it would be held on a Saturday or Sunday. They were gonna figure times out later. So if you're interested in a galactic healing class opportunity, head over to the website, um, email Jim and let him know. And then let's do our introduction. So in the Hangout, we have Christine, Don, Michelle, Reinhardt, Trinity, Yad, and myself, Temple. And so I think um, the next thing we wanna do is um, we wanna do blessings. Does anyone have a, does anyone have a blessing this morning? I Anyone? will do one. Okay. I will do <laughs> Thank awesome. you. Hiya. Hiya. Oh, uh -huh. 
Thank you. Thank you. That was beautiful. Anybody else want to do a blessing? It doesn't have to be in uh, galactic or light language. It can just be in English or in your native language. Anyone? I could say, blessed be. Sure. Awesome. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Thank you. Blessed be is good. Blessed, blessed be. be is good. Yes. Okay. If, <laughs> if, uh, if no one else has a blessing, I will do a a uh, blessing and then um, we will hang out with Safira. All right. Okay. Bushu ta sanayasa pula kyoto shakana satia yes yenatu kubuta yakala anasiti kushu nayata ayasata nalahana samakio tu pujo nataka la moto kupuji tia sanana itiata la mata saka puaya shunana ikiashana tasa kala madaya no makatia tiashana natsatia taguna shita yaka amatiata nalahana taki pu ushana tapasagi la magina tapu kuba hala hashakana Nasiana ta pakuria tu pa la yo shoshiana ta. Nasiana naleana abati guasha nasanana. Namaste. Namaste. Thank wow, you. that was like poetry of some. Yeah. <laughs> that was poetry. Beautiful. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. So um, we're glad you're here, Safira. And um, thank you. If you guys have questions, feel free to write them in the chat. And if you have questions on YouTube, uh, Don will help you guys out and he will relay them to me. So um, then we can get a, uh, a, a line started so we're not all talking over each other. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. I think with the time change that happened, also it just happened in Israel now with time change, in the like 10 hours ahead of me now and so i think people will be coming in will be trickling in as they wake up um i for me it's uh, eight o'clock in the morning here so yes it's early <laughs> <laughs> and michelle thank you so much for your energy and thank you so much yeah for your beauty and your heart and everybody else for being just supportive and Okay, I'm going to just meditate a moment and then I will bring in Sado. His name is Sado. He's already here, but I want to bring him in more deeply if I can. Yes, you are right, and I am here. Greetings to everyone. Thank you for coming. We're so happy to have you here. Well, thank you. My name is Sado. I am Essasani on a ship. I am translating to Safira, so I am not possessing her, so to speak, but she can already feel my energy. There is an energy exchange and a mind exchange, if you understand what I mean. Of course. Very well. <clears throat> so, many of us are here. As was mentioned, and as you know, to assist you in your personal development, this means as your vibration raises, as you reach for contact 
to a higher consciousness in your life and in your lives. And as you continue to open your heart to that energy, then you begin to raise your vibration. Now, this is also followed by actions of charity and service to others. And of course, attending to yourselves and your well being. Otherwise, you cannot serve others if you yourself are just completely mm, dried out, uh, burnt out, as you say. So self-care, of course, you've all heard this term, and it is very easy to ignore it. We ourselves cannot avoid it because we are in such community with one another, whereas you are many times all isolated from one another, and nobody can see how you are sleeping or not sleeping or eating or not eating or the type of nutrition you take into your body and the type of stress that you go through on a daily basis and the matter of your finances, which are a great matter of stress for so many. We do not have all of these same stresses. So therefore, and we, we are in community. So we do self-care by also being part of each other. If I'm sure you know what I mean and how often this is not the case on your planet. There are some tribal communities who do have that, you have that hmm, emotionally telepathic relationship with one another. And you know, telepathy is not only mind to mind, but it is also heart to heart, as you know. And it begins in the heart where you feel the intentions and you can feel how others are doing and you are there to support them as a community. Unfortunately, as I have just said, many of you do not have this opportunity. And so it is easy to fall apart, so to speak, without anyone noticing until it is almost too late. So this is why I mentioned the importance of taking care of oneself, which means making yourself vulnerable to those around you as well, expressing how you are really doing instead of saying how you are doing in passing. And yes, and also developing a community within your community. Like you have a community, you have your spiritual community here and you meet regularly here and there. And some of you know each other better and some of you don't. But there is the general feeling that one must present a very spiritually mature persona to all and a very reliable and mature and moving forward and having many spiritual gifts and all of these things, which is wonderful and fine. And you do all have many spiritual gifts, but sometimes the vulnerability in the moment when you are not doing so well uh, might be lacking. And it can also be lacking, as you are well aware, with your own partners with whom you even live. Therefore, it is this kind of intimacy that becomes necessary to shed also <clears throat> what you need to shed. While you are raising your vibration, you begin to move in a kind of a spin. If you can imagine going through a wormhole as a type of spin, only this is like a vertical spinning. It is sort of coming into a centrifugal pressure um, chamber where you are spinning. And as you are spinning, everything which is on you and attached to you, which does not belong to you, is begins to, to fly off of you. And so this is what happens when you begin to raise your vibration. And yes, and it is very important as you raise your vibration, as I have mentioned, as you come into more telepathic community with one another, this is all part of the what happens when you reach out to a higher spiritual channel in your life. And this is part of personal development in a spiritual sense that you, as I have said, you reach out 
to a higher consciousness and communicate and open your heart, open your heart to one another. And as you are raising your vibration through giving and taking care of yourself and others around you and becoming vulnerable, then you raise yourselves up higher and higher, and then you create a net to help others to fall when they need to and to be pushed up when they need to. And so many times this is lacking in your spiritual communities, mostly because your spiritual communities are mostly online and it is difficult to really see how each other is really doing unless you take the time to share. So this was the beginning of my message today to you. Thank you. Thank you. Are you willing to um, help us out with some questions perhaps? Perhaps. <laughs> Christine? I enjoy, I enjoy being a little sassy. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> I have a question about, um, like you were saying about getting signs that um, I'm getting in contact with ETs or whatever, even though within my heart I feel I am, sometimes I want um, physical things to tell me. So the other day, <clears throat> I had these two bite marks, or not two, three, four teeth marks on my arm. And um, my elbow still hurts a lot, but I couldn't figure out where those teeth marks came from. It couldn't have been me biting myself because of where it was placed on the arm. And I couldn't, um, and it wasn't the animals because they weren't, they weren't animal bites. That was one. And then the other one is just the other morning when I was listening to um, these uh, people channeling one of the planets, I heard these two little beeps in my ear that were as if I had um, um, an earplug or something in my ear, um, a hearing aid in my ear, and how when you want to raise the volume, it goes beep, beep, and you want to lower it, it goes beep, that I had those little beeps in my ear, and I don't have any earplugs or anything in my ear. I, I was wondering if that also was another uh, contact, or <clears throat> I'm just wondering what they're about. Do you do shielding before you sleep? Sometimes. I don't always you remember. Shielding, and you need to contact Grindel. I know Grindel. And he, you call him. You ask him to help you remove any implants or protect you from any attacks of that nature. Okay. That could be human, it could be insectoid, there are other entities which are trying to stop many of you moving forward. Your contact with friendly extraterrestrials can be thwarted by those who marks on your hand and then you decide, oh, you've had enough, you're going to move in this direction in any way, shape or form, in order to protect yourself from further such activities. But most of your galactic friends who are speaking and to communicate with you are benevolent, it would not hurt you. But you do get attacked sometimes from reptilians or in the probably more insectoids. I cannot name the exact race, but for sure, they are not friendly, obviously. In your ear is a communication attempt. It is nothing negative. And so here you have your dilemma to you keep yourself open for communication with your galactic neighbors who are wanting to communicate and be benevolent and help you along. And at the same time, you need to shield yourself from those who would mean you harm. 
maybe they do not really, really mean you harm, but as I mentioned, they do want to stop you uh, on your path, if that makes sense. It does. I was told that also from childhood they've been trying to do that too. Thank you very much. Mm. And I will yes. talk with Grindel. Please talk with Grindel and also please, please practice shielding. If you need to find a <clears throat> guided meditation for shielding to listen to, then please do that. Whatever is going to assist you on making a very strong shield. And you may want to find out and get to the bottom of who has been on your heels, so to speak, since childhood. And then there can be a contract. It can be a karmic situation that you have been involved with in other soul lifetimes, in other bodies, where this energy has followed you and continues to follow you until something is resolved. Thank you. I would take it rather seriously and do, along with any investigation that you have done, continue to do some very intensive investigation and put a stop to it. Thank you. Thank you. Blessed be. Blessed be. Uh, Catalino has a question and then Reinhardt. Very well. Hello, Sado. My name is Catalin. Hello, Catalin. How are you? <laughs> I am wonderful. I thank hope it is very much. for you. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I do not have anything to complain about whatsoever. Oh, you have to come on earth and things will uh, change rapidly for you. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you say um, that, dear Kathleen? Uh, because uh, it doesn't matter how evolved you are. You're born from zero. <laughs> zero awareness, zero everything. <laughs> then you start to see things, you start to learn things. You learn there's this um, outside world only. And um, it starts very... Uh, you come in very prepared to ascend here, actually. Yes, I have come to... Every action we take is towards our own development. So yes, whatever I am here to offer to you, I am also offering it to myself and to those around me, since, as I mentioned, we are in community and we benefit from each other. And yes, every race is in a constant evolution of ascension. However, we do no longer go to the very deep downs in order to go to the higher ups as many of you do and other races as well. But this does not matter. I am fine. And how are you? And may I help you in some other way? Yes. Uh, first uh, question is um, about uh, the chakras. Um, since I heard last time, we have a lot of them. I want to ask you uh, in somehow um, indirectly, are two chakras um, alike in, the, in our body? I do not understand the question. Um, I want to, I want to rephrase it to make it more, um, from my, um, seeing, um, chakras are accessing portals to, um, let's say divine essences. Um, 
are are only the the main chakra uh, portals to divine essences or just um, all of them? The main chakras are connected to your spiritual bodies and are there for your personal development and for the functioning of your physical organs in the place that they reside. They are also there to bring you into a harmony with your higher self and bring you in harmony with those around you. There are a few chakras which are connected to the higher realms and facilitate channeling. And for those who are very evolved, perhaps traveling through portals, but it is not necessary to use a particular chakra for this when one is more developed and ready to go, so to speak. And the smaller chakras, so what, that what? Yes. If you believe you want to use your main chakras for traveling through portals, I do not see that, but everything is, everything within your imagination is possible. So I will not say it is not possible. I will only say that your main, I, so I explain what your main chakras are used for, but there are many past lives also with your chakras. And so you carry, it is not easy to have all of your chakras in their fullest form uh, until one goes through their past lives and releases whatever might be there as well, which you carry with you into this body. Yes. Yeah, um, my second question eventually uh, is, can I, um, the, uh, the way I see the Akashic records, like uh, your personal history, I see uh, from my uh, point of view of my personal work, I see it as a, like a personal history that holds you back. Is it, uh, is it correct? to take on the Akashic records and erase it? They cannot be erased, it but they do, not erased. Hold, they do not hold you back. Okay, that's that's uh, the, uh, the answer I needed. So it, it doesn't yes. hold you back. It's not, it's not part of your um, past history. It is everything about your past history. However, Yes. Is the Akashic records holding you back? It might be some ancestral karma which is holding you back. It might be some past life karma that is holding you back. It might be yourself and the fear of success which is holding you back. The Akashic records is a library. You can access mm -hmm. where you might be being held back, but it is not the Akashic records holding you back. It is simply the, the history, your own personal soul history, which at different times might be holding you back. So it is up to you to cut cords, make restitution, whatever you need to do to feel like you can clip the, clip the chains, which you feel are holding you back, and then you can continue to fly. And everything that you do from that point onward is also in the Akashic Records, but they do not hold you back. They might hold information as to why you feel held back, but they do not themselves hold you back. And no, they cannot be erased. Yes. Uh -huh, okay. <clears throat> yeah. Um, Thank you. So the Akashic Record uh, holds our feelings also? They do not hold your feelings. They hold a record of everything you have experienced, your feelings are held in your emotional body and within your chakras. Aha, uh -huh. okay, 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 good, 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 thank you very much. Um, one more question. Um, this is more technical. Um, I'm working on the Bashar's uh, space-time antenna. Um, so in order to understand it better, uh, when we have a oscillating, an oscillating circuit, 
um, when it oscillates, it has some sort of back EMF. Um, my question is, when the back EMF or um, how uh, through resonance, how is it possible that the input energy is lower than the output energy? How that is a very good one. I am not able to answer at this time. I ask your forgiveness. Uh, is it uh, like, um, okay. I am not able to answer that at this time. Thank you. Okay. Well, good. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time then. Thank you. I love you very much, Sado. Thank you. I love you. Thank you, Kathleen. Bye. Bye bye. And how is everybody doing? Who's listening? We're doing really good. Reinhardt has the next question. Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, hello, Sado. This is Reinhardt. Um, the question. Hello, Reinhardt. From, yes, hello. The question from Christine um, got me thinking about. I heard that if one manifests an electronic circle, so that would help to shield oneself furthermore for things coming in, like Christine has um, had said, which is not to our best or good. Do you know about this manifestation of the electronic circle? Did you hear about it, Sado? I have not. However, I can see in my mind a spiral which starts from the ground and goes up and around your being. And it can be electrically charged. It can be charged with color. It can be charged with intention. And it can serve as a shield. So yes, this is quite possible. I do not know of a physical shield that has been built in no, such no, a way. It is not a physical build. I understood it is not a physical physical build. It is a mental build. Yes. Yeah. Well, yes, I believe that I got an image of it. I believe that you can use it in whichever way and build it in whichever way you feel it is, is appropriate. Some people like Safira. She will surround herself with diamonds. It's a very hard substance. And colors, which deflect negative energy and all sorts of other colors. You can use many, but you are referring to this electrical shield. It is like a force field that you see in fiction films that ships and planets will have around them to keep incoming attacks away, they will deflect them, they will destroy them. This is a beautiful concept. You can create this very well. And you can ask your guides to help you and those who are perhaps, mm, the word fails me, those who are adept at helping you build such things. Everything is possible in your mind, everything. It is only a matter of believing and I know that Jesus said when he was on your earth that with the faith of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. And mm -hmm. I think this has been a puzzle for many because it is hard to imagine the kind of power behind that kind of absolute knowing and that absolute belief. But you will notice that when, and you will all notice this, that when you really, really want something, or when you are really in dire note, then you are able to move mountains. Then yeah. it becomes possible. I can, so it's a question. thank you very much, Sado. I will uh, apply those hints you have given and incorporate them with other manifestation I have already done. 
So many thanks, many thanks to you and a good day. Thank you. Yo, you're very welcome. And as I was saying, if you can all put yourself in that situation of urgency to want, for example, if you can daydream, well, I know you can all daydream. If you can daydream in the sense of not being able to, but please daydream a new earth. Daydream what it could feel like and look like. Daydream all of your plants and bushes and fruits being fully restored and the greenest of possible greens and the most delicious and non-chemically affected fruits and vegetables and the vibrancy of your animals on the earth and the balance that they all can strike again with each other, which is many times put off due to or different extinctions which have been going on. Imagine, imagine and daydream this new earth into existence. Because what you daydream, what you imagine, what you long for, you also manifest. And it becomes a larger conscious manifestation from many. Even if your imaginations are a little bit different of how things look, it does not matter. Still, the earth responds to the imaginations and the deepest heart wishes of those who live on it. Thank you so much. We have uh, quite a few questions here in the YouTube chat. Richard is asking, um, will those who are still not awakened ascend to 4D as well? They will remain in 3D as they continue to ascend. There will be different dimensions. It is not as if they are going to suddenly dissipate or explode or die. And some may die because of natural disasters, but some people who are ready for fourth dimension might also die because of some natural disasters. It does not prevent the ascension of the soul, of the spirit. But they, with the dimension that you are living at, the density, this involves what you are able to breathe in as well. On this earth, you are breathing in oxygen. In the other dimensions, you begin to breathe in the presence of God. You breathe in the presence of love. If you are unable to breathe in the presence of God and love and a higher, be able to handle a higher spin of vibration, then it is not as if you will be rejected or turned away. You will simply not be able to go there because you just will not be able, it, it will be like walking straight ahead and hitting a glass door that is so clear you have not seen it. You will bang your head against it and fall down for a moment and rub your head and decide you cannot penetrate and go back. But we are counting on those of you who are developing yourself in this way to be able to help help sounds condescending, to be able as a natural example and as having a heart full of charity and love, to be able to bring your brothers and sisters with you. It is not and should not be seen as a separation of us and them. We are four-dimensional and they are not. And I am sure, Richard, that is not what you meant. I am simply expounding on this idea that you have asked. Thank you. Thank you. Um, another question is, why do most humans, let me rephrase this, it seems that most humans are unable to stay healthy when eating a long-term vegan or fruitarian diet. Do you have any insight as to why this is the case? I would like to know where that information is coming from that most people cannot remain healthy. Can you please re re 
Re-read that question, please. Sure. So the way that it's stated says, why do most humans can't seem to stay healthy eating a long-term vegan or fruitarian diet? This is from the chat, the YouTube chat. I understand. I understand. And thank you for your question. I cannot really delve into the human physiology as much as you would like me to. I am not as familiar with it. I will say that the human body, I know, needs a balance. And perhaps in eating only fruit and vegetables or only fruits, for example, there is an over alkalizing of the body. There needs to be a balance of alkaline and acidic. And the concept that the body being acidic is very bad is true when it is overly acidic and there is no alkaline acidic balance. So those who choose to be vegan or fruitarian, they need to make sure that they are getting this balance. And there are other civilizations, not on your planet, who do eat a balance of fruits and vegetables and also meat, but they do not slaughter their animals to get their meat. They produce their meat. So it is the mm, disgusting if, is the only word that I can use and forgive me, habit of killing your animals the way you do in order to eat them. Uh, it is it is, yes, I do not wish to dwell there for too long because it is very, uh, it is very barbaric, but there is a way, and I have heard that on your planet, there are those who are cultivating meat without killing animals, which may seem revolting on one side, but there are other civilizations who have done this quite successfully and have a good balance. So therefore, it is difficult if you are not balancing out your intake with enough different types of proteins and vegetables have proteins, but the body needs various types of proteins and amino acids that I know. And to be purely fruitarian is a good idea for a while. I would say there are a, fair number, a fairly number, a fair number of humans who can live in this way very well for a long time. I wouldn't agree that most get sick. I would say that those who are not doing it wisely and with enough nutritional advice can fall into a trap of imbalance. And I am done, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> I would also add to that from my personal experience that I think it depends a lot on your biological makeup, um, what DNA you have from specific galactic races as far as what, how your, what is best for you in your own diet. We actually have some more questions on diet if you feel that's okay that you would like to take them. I am not sure I can answer, but I will attempt. Okay. Um, what is the best diet naturally for a human? Uh, does it really depend heavily on the individual or is there a basic guideline? It does depend on the individual. It would be erroneous of me to give a general diet that would be good for all. Important is balance. I will say important is balance, but each one needs to find out, as you have said, about what your individual intake should be. Should there be more amino type protein? Should there be more vegetable type proteins? Should there be dairy? Should there not be dairy? Some will tell you never to eat dairy. Some will thrive on it. Therefore, it is impossible for me to give you on your planet a general diet. I am sorry. No, there are many I think, different types. I think that was Continue. well answered. 
Um, for, from my experience, I can tell you that I do eat a lot of protein. I eat a lot of eggs. Um, I eat a lot of red meat, but I, my galactic makeup in my human DNA has a lot of reptilian in it. So that would be something that, <laughs> that is just very natural for me to do. So you, you have to go with what your body needs and what your body is craving. There, there is a reason for it while keeping everything in balance. Um, yes. So yes, I agree. And let me add this. It is very sad when food cannot be enjoyed in its fullest, when natural food cannot be enjoyed, because there is so much, do not eat this and do not eat that, and you cannot eat and you shouldn't eat. And therefore, your body will digest foods that others have told you not to eat. If you can eat them, enjoy and bless them and do not worry, about how sick they're going to make your body because the more you think about it, the more you manifest that. I am not telling you to eat what is not good for you. I will not even tell you what is not good for you. I will simply say, find that out. There are different ways to find out what is good and what is not good for you, for your particular body, your particular blood type, your particular genetic makeup. There are many things, many, many factors. When you eat something, and it feels good, and your stomach digests it very easily, then you can imagine that that is something good for you. It's very simple. When you have a very long time to digest something, and you feel tired after you've eaten it, then that is a signal as well. You can actually, by listening closely to your own body, understand what you really need and what you really do not need. The problem is, and comes into being, that there are emotional needs which your society has learned to fill with foods which provide a false sense of getting the right minerals. For example, salt is a lack of certain minerals. And so there is an incredible explosion of the need to eat salty things and snacks and sugar is the same way. And so your bodies have become out of balance and therefore it may not be easy for you to test your own body, but there are still ways to do it. And I am not suggesting that you never eat another salty snack or another sugary snack. I am simply suggesting that all things need to be in balance with one another. Thank you. Um, and oh, as you, let me, one more point. As you develop your emotional freedom, you will find that you need less and less substitutes for the real thing. Thank you. I am done. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I think this is a question. This came from the, the YouTube chat. So let me just see here. I'm sorry. One moment. No problem. Okay, I think um, we we will. The, the I'm not quite sure I understand the question. The question is, um, each of the chakras have it's, the circuits within the chakras is what corresponds with that residence. So I'm I'm unsure what they're asking. If they're asking, um, what are the specific residences? resonances with each of the chakras, if that's what they're asking, or if they're asking something else. I don't know yes, if you have... Each, I can just say each chakra has a different resonance, or uh, you know them as megahertz, so to speak. And in your society, you have a lot of music, which correlates to the different chakras and you can find those and play them, listen to them, and it can help you to strengthen your chakras. It will not, it is a strengthening tool. It is a supportive tool. It will not necessarily release all of your memories and traumas and past lives, but it will give you the strength to delve into them yourself, if that makes sense. 
Thank you. Um, Don, you have a question? Yes, I do. Blessings, Sato. This is Don. Blessings, Don. My question is, uh, recently I saw an image of a human form that had been literally turned into a light bulb in glowing state. Um, and what, would, what would be the conditions whereby this wouldn't actually occur? Thank you. I cannot answer that question. Okay. I just wondered. Thank you. You're welcome. Blessings. Blessings. But you know that your human body is full of electronics. And as the movie in The Matrix has shown you, it can be used to sustain artificial intelligence even. That was science fiction, but it may not be that far from the truth. Therefore, you take the idea of amping up your body to certain levels of electrical charge. And it might be possible by pressing your fingers onto a copper line that it can light up a bulb. But I do not believe that most humans would really be able to um, get to the point where they would be able to amp their body up to that point on their own. Perhaps that helps. That helps. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Next we have, I'm not sure quite how to pronounce the, the name, uh, Yudi Amin. Greetings. Greetings. Hello. Uh, so I have a question about uh, lifting weights and its relation to health. So I've actually uh, been lifting weights. Uh, last... Are you there, Yudiam? Hello? Yes, I can hear him. OK, OK, I, I'll continue. So uh, yes. I've been lifting weights for the last uh, what, nine months. I very quickly gained a, a lot of uh, muscle mass. And it's a, it's a little unusual because people who've seen me like six months ago can't really recognize me so much. So what's causing this uh, anabolic surge? Is it something, uh, you know, like very mundane or is it some additional uh, factor going on here? Are you drinking any anything to increase your levels of protein in your body? Yes, what I, are you I, I'm having a, the a very standard protein uh, supplement. Well, that's about it on the supplement side. Yes, but that will along with your weightlifting, increase your muscle mass. Are you feeling healthy? Yes, yes, definitely. A lot more than Are you before. feeling energized? Most of the time, yes, I would say. Very well. Your body has simply transformed its fat into muscle. And each get bigger than you are? I, I think I uh, didn't catch your last question. Do you feel the need to get more muscular than you already are? Probably, yes. I think yeah. not, not a lot more, but yeah. And, and for which reason? Oh, I, I guess it's just um, following the trend, I guess. I mean, I, I don't know the reason for sure, but that's what I feel. As long as you, well, you do have an opportunity to, in this world of bodybuilding, to bring in a deeper spirituality because many are seeing their identity in the beauty of their bodies. And the human body is a beautiful thing. It can also be exaggerated by weight or by muscle. There can be extremes, as you know in both areas and there is however sometimes an over exaggeration of the importance of the body where is it is important again a balance needs to be struck between personal development and spiritual growth and the development of the body now if your spiritual muscles are as huh, what is that word buff you say if it is as buff as your physical body, 
then that is wonderful. And you can, in a very subtle and natural way, bring this consciousness into your world. So I would say that this is a very good thing. I see. I it see. is to know that your body is useful to carry the message of the spirit. It is useful to do things to develop your spirit. For example, the more acts of charity and generosity, the more it builds up your spirit. Is your spirit building muscle? I would ask you this. And congratulations when both are building muscle. I'm I simply see. asking you, I'm telling you that you are not building muscle, spiritual muscle. I do not think you would be here if you were not. I am simply congratulating you if you are and asking you to continue to make your spirit as buff as your body and to bring that consciousness into your world with those who are doing the same thing. I see, and that, that's very interesting. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that answer. I'll let the next person ask. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. I'm happy to have met you. <laughs> Same here. So next we have Yad. Uh, his mic, uh, their mic's not working, so we're going to just ask the question from the chat. Uh, they would like to know if it is possible eventually to obtain meat without slaughtering animals or how that's Absolutely. And it is being done. There are some cells that can be taken from different animals and those can be grown in laboratories and they can, this is already being done on your planet. It has been done for hundreds of years on other planets, but it is now being done on yours. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Um, Cami has a question. The aliens are very advanced mentally, culturally, and te technologically. Would you describe the problem effect of this, the problem that, if, would you describe the problem effects of this on human society after contact? Do you want me to rephrase would that? Describe <laughs> the problems that it would bring? That I think that's so probably. Advanced? Yeah, I think that might be the question. Mm. Well, do not forget that many of your benevolent races are also advanced in consciousness and compassion and would already understand that a lot of patience would be needed. And we cannot just barge in and throw our technology on the earth and expect everyone to jump for joy. Many would reject it in the beginning. There would be mistrust in the beginning. It would take quite a while for what we have to offer to be truly implemented. And not only that, we would have to be accepted by the governments as well, because they do have means to stop us in some ways. So we, cannot just barge in and say, well, we are stronger and better and more advanced and we can help you along. It is like a parent imposing itself on a teenager because the parent can see, has more intelligence, has more technology in which to help their child advance and become the person that their parent thinks they're teenage or even young from younger, but I say teenage because teenagers are more able to comprehend the exchange. But parents who try to do this often meet with resistance and rebellion because each being must find their way. And perhaps when they are a bit older, they will value the technology and the advice that was given and then be able to implement it. It is the same with any race coming to your planet. We cannot just simply come and impose ourselves and expect all that we are and all that we can do to be implemented. And in any case, we would not be coming until such a time when our acceptance would be much more embraced and what we have to offer to be embraced. 
But we also have things that we enjoy from the human race. So it would be condescending to think we can come, we are only coming to give our greatness and not receive from you. Because the humans have this, this emotionality that sometimes we have given up in the attempt to remain in a peaceful balance or where intellect has become stronger than emotions, for example. And also the human genome and DNA is so complicated and it is needed and useful in other parts of the galaxy. So it is not exactly an unfair exchange as you may imagine it to be. Thank you. That was perfect. You um, just answered the next question as well. But I, I want to um, throw out there that we shouldn't, we shouldn't assume that all uh, galactic races are more highly advanced than us. Yes, there's a lot of them that are more advanced, but there, there are other races as well that are not as advanced. So there's so many different types of races out there. Don't assume that all galactic races are highly advanced people and and that it's it doesn't work mm. that way. <laughs> this was my first thought upon hearing the question. However, I answered it in the point of view that those who would actually come with first contact would be advantageous to certain points of higher technology and consciousness. But yes, it is true to say that all alien races are more developed in all these areas. There are other third dimensional planets. There are second dimensional realms. There are very some very dark realms who would come and, and impose themselves without question. But it is your benevolent realms which are preventing this from happening. Yes, thank, thank you. you. You and I are on the same page. It's it's very complicated. <laughs> yes, it is. Thank you. Michelle? Hello, Michelle. Perhaps we can move on and come back. Okay. Um, I do have Michelle's question in the chat. I just wasn't sure if she was available to uh, ask it herself. So the question is, are chakras just an old control mechanism? I know several individuals who have removed theirs for a more pure flow of energy. Can you tell me what this is all about? Can you tell me about this? I understand. There may be a few who are able to do that, but the chakras are needed. They are not a control mechanism, but they can be controlled by your past. And therefore it is important to delve into your emotional experiences in your life and in your past life and relieve them. And your chakras will, in other dimensions, become different, have different purposes, different colors perhaps, or more intense. But I am not aware that they are, a, I'm not even sure what is meant by a control mechanism and who is controlling them from this question. But this would be my answer for now. Thank you. Uh, Yad has another question about the Orion Federation. Um, he would like to know what is their mission on Earth, and how are their main character, and what are their main characteristics in general? I am not very aware of the Orion, the Orions. I am on a ship. I am in another part of 
the world usually. And I am newly involved, so to speak. I am aware of your planet and I do communicate with others and observe, but I am not able to answer this question at the moment. Thank you. Um, let's see. The next question is, how good is uh, Shanghai for healing? Shanghai? I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's a Shanghai. Shanghai is a good communication between the spiritual realms and your own psyche. Every stone is excellent for healing. It is your intention and it is your communication with the stone itself, which can enhance. If you create a intimate relationship with your stones, meaning that you are aware that they are alive and that each has specific characteristics and Shanghai being mostly being green in color is good for the heart chakra and for the emotional issues there and also for the spiritual communication as well. But every stone can be used for healing in different ways or communication in different ways because the colors are supporting the colors of your own being and of your own chakras as well. There is always, almost always a correlation. And so they strengthen the particular area of the color in which they emit. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any questions in the uh, hangout at all? I would like to ask you a question because I came to not only there are long ritual questions, but to communicate with you as well. So my question to you, to all of you is, how do you envision, do you think that your world is ready for first contact and what would need to happen in order for it to happen if it is not? So you may answer my question now, please. Any or all who wish to answer. Oh, this is Reinhard uh, Sadu. How, how are you now? I, I think um, the person who makes contact needs to have um, higher frequency. That means uh, starting to develop consciousness. But um, if fear is in, in the people who have not awoken, <coughs> It is different um, to them than to other people who have um, the understanding what's coming. That's my opinion. Correct. And do you feel that your globe in general is ready for first contact and what would need to happen if not? I can't speak uh, about other people and other parts of the globe, I only have a feeling that it is, as I said, it is my understanding that what I said is just now. So there may so be other, other people who have other opinions and are just different. Yes, there are many individuals who have already had first contact. Absolutely. Many are speaking of and wishing for the arrival of the Yael's or the Pleiadians to come on a mass level and to show the earth that there is galactic neighbors who come in peace and to start to change the way the human culture exists and relates to each other with money and different acts of wars, etc. 
and I am speaking of this larger first contact. Do you think your world is ready? And if not, what needs to be done? And what do you think you can do? I guess I'm asking, adding a second, third question to that. And not only to you, I mean, in general, I would like to know what you think. Michelle said that she would like to answer. Go ahead, Michelle. Very well. Awesome. Wonderful, as you say. Hi. Hello. I don't think the human, I don't think we're ready. <laughs> we can't even, be like, we, we can't even be nice to one another. We cannot unconditionally love and accept <laughs> each other and correct our own issues and looking to a <clears throat> demigod or God or alien or somebody else to solve our problems is a cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater and B. <laughs> <laughs> I am not it's, aware of that. It, but it, it puts us, it puts, it puts us in a part. position of not being equals. Uh, it puts us in an underling position. But more importantly, how, the acceptance, the heart acceptance, I mean, I just feel like it would turn into an act of war and fear versus... Um, like we haven't even figured out how to get along with our neighbors. Like, I don't think we definitely, not that we don't need the help, but like we certainly haven't earned it. <laughs> Very well. Very well. And can you see a not too distant future where war at least would cease? and would give the your galactic neighbors more of a chance to arrive? I think that would be amazing. I think that's the goal. I mean, I don't, yeah. I mean, where we could become one without, um, I don't know, lies, lies and agendas behind it, as opposed to a true partnership. Yes. True relationship. Yes, I am aware that there is an attempt to communicate with your different governments around the world. And if they could come to an agreement to at least end most hostilities, then it would be easier for us to arrive. In other words, those who want to make first contact on a global level, need to have a certain atmosphere, need to have a certain level of consciousness on your earth. And that is why it would not really happen, as I said before, that we come to, and you all feel inferior because you're all so, so mm, below, but we will wait until the consciousness is higher but it will take those in leadership to help lead the way on one side. And on the other side, it would take all of those who do have first contact, and there are several of you here who do already, to be able to mm, disseminate that love and consciousness around. So it'll come from the bottom up and come from up to the bottom and meet in the middle. This is the hope. Yeah. Would you? I think my hope would be that we could all become heart centered in our society so that when other societies present themselves, that we are in a really strong place exactly. of love. Exactly. And that heart centeredness comes one by one by one. I want. Right. And therefore, the work that you are doing is valuable, and the work that all of you are doing on yourselves is valuable as well. Because one by one, raising up and spinning higher, ejecting off all that is unnecessary, and helping each other to 
be of comfort and charity and raise each other up. And you have your galactic councils. I am aware at least that they are working on the leadership level and many of you are working on the grassroots level. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Don. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, yes, I think the consciousness of the planet needs to be raised uh, in order to uh, allow for the sh coming down of the ships. Uh, that would be an education program primarily uh, directed to educate the population of the planet that uh, this is, is going to be happening. Um, wouldn't you say so, Sato? Absolutely. It, and how long do you think this could take? Well, to the higher dimensions, it's possible now. Um, but uh, to this dimension, it's, it could take, oh, five, maybe 10 years. Who knows? It depends that is on a very wonderful and hopeful prognosis. Yes. Yes, I would like to see the, actually the whole okay. sky of ships, but that's me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, as I have said, if we, be, if we arrive and there is not the foundation for it, then mm -hmm. it will cause problems and it will be of help. As you know, but you are doing your great work to help the planet raise consciousness. And many of you here who I am interacting with are doing the same and step by step and one by one. If you can only come more into community, you would all be more effective. Mm -hmm. Maybe think about that. Thank you. And the, the woman who was speaking and said, we are of like mind, is she also still here? Um, is that Michelle Ural? No. No. Um, the one who is hosting. Go ahead. Who's hosting today? Oh. Oh. Uh, Temple is hosting today. Sorry, I was away for a few moments. So, um, was there a question? I would like to hear your, yes, I would like to hear your opinion on my question. Um, I'm sorry, you'll have to repeat the question. <laughs> I had stepped away for a few moments, so I, I apologize. My no worries. My question was and is. What is your prognosis on when first contact on a global level can happen? How far along is your Earth to being able to receive us in a embracing way and be able to benefit from what we have to offer? Wow. Um, uh, I could write a thesis on that probably, um, <laughs> but for starters, for starters, we, we are making progress because our the, the number of countries um, have, from the last few galactic government meetings, the number of countries have agreed. So where we were a year ago, um, we have actually progressed, I don't know, maybe 40, 40, 25%, 25 to 40%, I, in my personal opinion. Um, a lot more countries are on board, but some of the biggest countries are not on board yet, and that's where the problem lies. Also, we have um, a new uh, development with scientists. A lot more scientists have are agreeing to the galactic um, history here on Earth, and so as they start funneling in more information, it will help the matter at hand greatly. Uh, and then after we can get the countries on board and we can get 
the scientists on board, um, and we have our contactees here on board with the galactic languages. There's a lot of stuff that has to take place. We have to remember that even though us and our small hookalo groups here are totally open to the idea, we have to think about those who, um, if you think about Orson Welles, the, I can't think of what the program was offhand now, but when War Orson Welles, Worlds. yes, War Yes, thank you. When Orson Welles went on the radio with War of the Worlds, I was just thinking about this the other day, in fact. Um, I was asking myself if he was in cahoots with the government as a test to see what would happen. So if for those of you who are not familiar, when Orson Welles went on the radio uh, with War of the Worlds, this is before television, um, there was massive panic attack because people thought this was actually a real thing. People actually had heart attacks, there was accidents, there was a few deaths. <laughs> um, and so they had to get on the radio and they had to calm everybody down and say, no, it was just a really well-performed radio program. And so I, I don't think that contact is going to happen um, within the next, you know, 20 to 50 years. I think it's going to be a little bit longer than that. But the thing is, nothing is set in stone. And so if, if each of us here keep doing what we're doing and keep shining our light uh, and keep educating, I think that there's a possibility that things can happen a lot sooner. But there is a lot of balls that have to be rolling all in sequence in order for this to get going. It's not as easy as some may think, oh, we're ready, let's just do it. It's not that easy. Sorry. Okay, I'm done. Well, I thank you for your answer. And it is true. And the timeline can be moved back or can be moved forward, depending on how much you can manifest the environment in which you have described where there is agreement and cooperation from the leadership, and there is cooperation and community on the grassroots level and helping creating and spreading light. This is why I mentioned in the very beginning of today that it would be wonderful for you to daydream all of this daydream it into reality imagine it feel it love it and it can be that if enough of you do this you can move your timeline thank you i completely agree with that um did catalino did you were you able to answer the question at all or did you have a question I wanted to um, come up with my version of uh, um, answer for... Very well, please. Um, I, your voice is very low, however. I cannot hardly hear you. Can you raise your voice? Can you, can you, can you hear me now? Yes. Um from the point of view of my personal work um, and seeing how difficult it is not only to know yourself um, but also to transform I see that the world is way too far from um, even needing a contact the first contact should be with, with ourselves uh, however, in Vancouver, where I live, um, I see a very interesting um, phenomenon. You know, uh, people, they say hello to each other on the streets. I see goodness um, coming from, from the people's soul. And I haven't seen, I've, I've been to several, lived through several places, and this is very special uh, uh, place and uh, place and people are really good at their heart. Um, however, from the spiritual point of view, there's still a lot, a lot to work. And um, um, I'm not sure how this will um, um, impact 
the contact with ETs, with you people. Um, one way would be probably to um, eliminate the lack and greed through um, some free energy technologies that people would have to them in their home uh, to get familiar with some um, small things like um, having a free energy device that will power their house or a car and uh, eventually present it as a alien technology so <clears throat> people will be aware of the of the of the aliens and our friends um, and as Don said um, through I, I guess this would come through governments like education um, that we are surrounded by um, by so many civilizations and, and races. Um, and I, I think this would be a very, very, if, if it's well done, I think it will be very uh, positive impact. And people would like that, <clears throat> uh, would like to um, see different friends and different shapes of... Uh, of, of ourselves actually because we are we are you no we are everyone so um i i think it's going to come pretty i don't know maybe 10 years and i hope for 10 years this would be my um way of seeing it that is a beautiful and heartfelt answer. Thank you. And it is true. And there is already technology for free energy, except it is being withheld, as you know. And if someone comes up with another way, to bring it out on a mass level all at once so that it cannot be suppressed so easily, then this would be helpful. And yes, when there is no longer the need to have money to survive and your society being controlled through money, who eats, who does not eat. This is the worst to see people starving and children starving because of a currency. But it is also a matter of your neighborhoods. If your neighborhoods would come together and take care of the homeless and those who are starving, really begin to show a community like you explained that you have seen where there is true goodness. Your world need mo needs models. And who is going to begin to build those models for you? Who? It is you. It is you one by one and then together who can build these models. We can encourage you. We can give you energy to fill your heart that you have the fuel to continue, but your fuel can also come from each other. Your fuel can come, as I said in the beginning, to find a connection with a higher consciousness. Some of your ET galactic races, many at the moment, represent a higher consciousness, but do not forget your saints, do not forget your sages, from your planet, do not forget your Buddhas, your Buddha and your and Jesus, and ultimately God Almighty, because it is from God Almighty that the sun of love and light is flowing to all of us who embrace it. This is what I mean by a higher consciousness. You can communicate with us, and we are happy to do this. But don't forget who you also have available at your own 
fingertips as well, and within you as well. If you were seeded by God, then you have his DNA, like a parent. It is like that teenager I mentioned. There is rebellion, but grow up and put away the rebellion and become who you truly are, and then be an example, build a community, imagine it, daydream it, and then build it, and be a role model as a community. And slowly, that will spread. And when the time is right, it will spread very quickly. There are already different efforts at such communities around the world. They are not as well known. They are afraid if they become too well known, they will be flooded and then faced with the same problems that they were trying to escape from in the first place. However, if such model communities can be built right in the hardest areas of your towns and cities, instead of in remote places, then this can become a wonderful model and example. Mm, yes. Great. Thank, Thank you, you for your answer. Thank you, Sadi. Thank you. Um, yes. Oh, sorry. I didn't want to interrupt anybody. I Some of you guys are not able to hear on my side when you speak. So if I interrupt you, I'm really sorry. <laughs> you have not interrupted. Okay. I so, just asked for, um, for Safira that you are mindful of the time because I feel she is very tired. Yeah, and I know she didn't um, wasn't able to get a good rest last night. We have about 30 minutes left, a little less than, than 30 minutes. Um, and we can always, well. if she's really tired, we can always end this early as well. So um, I would say 10 minutes and then the rest we can talk. You can, we can talk, talk and do, do blessings and light language and yeah. such. Okay, yes, I would that sounds say great. One or, one, or, one or two more questions and then that will be all. Okay, I have a question from Richard in the YouTube chat. Um, he says, "Free will uh, is free will a good thing or a bad thing? A lot of higher beings do not seem to have it. If it is true, how does free will actually work? People do not it, do people not have their opinions? Does that make sense?" Here again, we have a very general statement that most higher beings do not have it, which is not true. We live in community and we cooperate with one another because it is a wonderful thing to do. Therefore, it is our free will to do it. We have made that choice. We are not forced to live the way we do. Free will, Imagine a father who has two sons. One son he is grooming to take over his position, but that son does not really respect his father's work. The other son is voluntarily learning everything that he can learn about his father's business. And even though he may not seem the proper candidate to the father, it is actually his own effort that is raising him up to be able to reach this height. It is the same with God and all of us. Free will is very important because each of us are meant to be God, gods, so to speak. We are all meant to come into oneness with the Almighty God. And that consciousness and that light 
and simply that being, but we are also all meant to be creator beings as well. Now, if you do not show that you are willing and able to take on the responsibility by growing who you are and doing the, making the effort to learn and by emulating the very essence of God in life around you, then it is difficult for God to choose you because if he just made you do all of that and had it already programmed, there is no possibility for the absolute joy and love in such an exchange between father and son and father and daughter. So yes, free will is vital and it was given and this is why in part things have become a mess, but you are also using your free will to bring restoration to all things. And how long that takes is also a matter of free will. This is why we cannot absolutely decide when first contact will come. We will wait until the free will of your governments and of your individuals have grown themselves to the point where they are willing to work with their galactic neighbors and become part of the galactic community, which you already are in many ways, but there is still the problem of warring and power and possession. Yes, these things still with free will need to be overcome and hopefully sooner than later. Thank you. Thank you so much. The last question of the day uh, is from Udiman. I'm gonna go ahead. Greetings once Hello. again. Hello, Udiman. Hello. Yeah. So uh, my question is really about uh, feminine energy and in particular the uh, the pure feminine energy. So what is my connection to it, and how can I be more sensitive to it? Because I have been connecting to it more in the last few months. How can I increase my sensitivity? to this kind of energy. I have not understood. The whole, I understood you want to connect yourself to a certain type of energy. Uh, what I have not understood the type of energy. Yeah, so I, I was talking about the pure feminine energy, the uh, divine feminine. Mm, yes. Well, you have divine femininity within yourself. All beings have both the masculine and feminine, though their DNA may play out a more masculine physical body. Hmm. How much time do you spend in nature? Well, about um, half an hour to one hour every day, I guess, one hour a day. Well, then I would say you are already connecting to the divine. What makes you feel like you are not? What do you feel uh, you're missing? Well, it doesn't manifest much around me, to be honest. That's the feeling I get. Mm. Maybe your definition of what is feminine is different. For example, the feminine nature is one of nurturing and peace. Those would be, and is a more responsive energy. Perhaps you feel like you are being too domineering without the ability to listen and to nurture. Is that true? Yes, that is pretty much true. Mm. Very well. Well, you already know this and therefore you can ask for your feminine spirit guides to come closer to you. You can read books about the difference between male and female 
characteristics and how they approach different aspects of the same subject. So they will approach the subject through two different points of view. You can learn more about how women truly think and open yourself up to your own feminine energy, which is already there. You can, now I'm going to make a joke, but you can get some female clothing. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Uh, I could not help the joke. I know that there are many men on your planet who enjoy doing that. And perhaps it does bring them a bit of a feminine feeling. Maybe this is what they want, is to come more into their feminine energy. But yes, it is a very important thing to be able to do because if you cannot really be able to settle down, like as I say, to not only build your spiritual muscle and your physical muscle, but to open your heart as well and be able to listen, to truly listen. So when you go out in nature, do you simply sit down and listen? Do you take time to do this? And I usually walk around and uh, do a little bird watching. That's the main thing. Oh, this is a very beautiful activity. I'm guessing you have more of a kind, receptive nature than you believe you do. You would not be able to do that, I believe, if you did not. Oh, okay. Because this is a very, it's a very receiving of beauty and sharing of beauty in that. And yes, you can connect more, take a little time to also close your eyes when you are walking in the forest. Take a moment to sit down somewhere and just close your eyes and listen and receive. And if you do this on a regular basis, the elementals will come, perhaps some fairies and some elves, and they will be able to touch you in ways that you did not imagine before. You will begin to see the world in a different way. You will begin to understand that without your mother, there is no true life. You cannot exist only by your father alone. Then you will begin to really respect and honor the female being and nature as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's a good answer. That is a very important question. But let me add one more thing to it, please. Okay, yeah, that go ahead. From a, from a psychological viewpoint, if you have grown up without the role model to embrace the feminine, then this is another clearing that you can do because many times it is a cultural habit passed down from generation to generation on your planet of behavior towards women and towards other men. Just a suggestion. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, uh, we want to thank uh, Sato for coming in today and uh, sharing wisdom with us and helping answer our questions. Uh, do you feel like you want to bring Safira back? Is she pretty tired? I would like to say that the name is Sado. Oh, I'm so sorry, Sado. Uh, Sado. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that, is, that is fine. I simply want to clarify my name. Are there many more questions waiting or can we finish? Um, it looks like we, I think we're good. I think we're, we're good. Thank you. Very well. Then I thank you. I have philosophized much. <laughs> and I thank you for responding to my questions as well.
And until next time, much love. Much love and to you. Namaste. Thank you. Okay. Welcome back. Oh, thank you. That was wonderful. Great session. Thank you. How is everybody? Great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I'm, I'm glad to see a lot more people came in as well. Yeah, thank, thank you, you Chris. Yeah. Excellent. It, it was a great session today. We have we have tons of people in thank the chat you. And here. Thank you. So I think what we should do then, if you're comfortable, um, is to do some blessings, or do you want to just chat first and then do some blessings? What would you prefer, Sifira? Well, let's close off with blessings so that we can stop at 10. Okay. And then if can you, I myself, um, well, we have 10 minutes, so let's take... Let's take five to seven minutes. I've changed my mind. <laughs> if anybody has anything to say or questions about what was talked about, or just comments, and then we, at five two, we can close for blessings. How's that? Yeah, that's great. Hi, okay. Safir. It's Wendy. I just wanted to say hi. Love you, girl. Hey, hi, Wendy. Thank you. <laughs> it was a, it was a great session. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you, and thanks, Sado. Yes, you know when I was done, I felt like I was like, like up, like I'm not on my chair, <laughs> so to speak. Although I wasn't in total trance, um, that I'm still working on. But um, Jim said that it's not. Um, he himself goes into trance very rarely, but. There is uh, the conscious channeling, then there's a semi, then there's the semi trance and the trance. So I probably still in the conscious, a little bit in the semi, because when I'm done, I don't remember mo a lot of what was said. I don't need to as well. But uh, yeah, thank you, everybody. Your questions were um, were very intense and very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would agree. I'm just running through the different chats here to see um, if we missed anything. There was there was a few from the very end that we didn't get to, um, but I don't know if we want to save those or if we we just want to give our experiences with yeah, them. Yeah, let's, uh, let's okay. see what everybody else. Let's, so, let's have everybody else answer the question. <laughs> yeah, hey, I, I think Sophia. this is I think this is a good one for people to give their experiences. Oh, sorry. Um, the question is, what should we do if we have narcissistic parent, mother in this life? Unconditional love will spend all our lifetime on them, and it could be wrong. So, what? How do you handle having a narcissist uh, parental unit? Anybody have experience with that? Or want to share what their thoughts are? Okay, I. Okay, no, no. no go ahead. Let let somebody else. <laughs> yeah. And if nobody else, I will. <laughs> um. I mean, I guess if no one has anything to say, I could uh, share a bit about my experience. Um, yes, please. In, in my experience. Um, it took me a while to learn to navigate things and to not let and and to not let their emotional outbursts and the way they spin um, their reality affect me. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now I've realized to uh, to to step back and put a spacer between the energies. And so when that person is doing their their narcissistic thing that they do so well. Um, I, mm -hmm. I recognize it mm -hmm. more as th this is their world. And I still do try to, um, I still do try to give in as much as I can just to make things smoother, but that doesn't mean that I let it affect me. Um, mm -hmm. Like I used to when I was younger. So mm -hmm. I think there's something to be 
to be said about that. It's navigation of narcissistic people in your life is very difficult, especially for um, empaths and um, those those who. I mean, it affects everybody, but specifically, you know, empaths. So I don't know if that that helps or not. It's it's a, it's been a long journey. It's been a really long journey. But if you can learn to separate and see them for for that's their world and that's that's how they view their world, it kind of separates things and makes it a little bit easier. Yeah. Thanks, Alicia. Yeah. I'd like to sh- I'd like else? to share. Yeah, I'd like to share for some th- on that a little bit. Um, that's funny that that this situation came up because I just had this experience Ruth, with a family. Wanna... What, honey? Or do you want to do you want to give your um? Oh, uh, uh, Wendy's speaking. Can you hear Wendy? Oh, I'm sorry, I cannot. <laughs> oh, oh boy, okay. Wendy. See, so, yeah, sometimes I can't tell if she can hear us or not. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm so sorry. Um, I just wanted to, I just wanted to comment on this because it was a synchronicity in my own life. In the last few days, I had a situation with a, a family member myself. Um, You know, it's a person who has always had a narcissistic personality, uh, addiction issues, things like that. Although not all of that pertains right now. However, it was a very similar situation in which they were expressing their anger about me moving away from them, mm. physically, physically moving out of the state and away from them and how angry they were at me about doing that. And, mm. and, and exactly like Alicia said, it's, it was really weird because I had this new clarity about how exactly what she said that I can honor and understand the person's point of view, and, and, and I think we've all been there, you know, in one sh- way, shape or form about being angry at somebody for doing something that affects us, that makes us sad. Um, yeah. And that's, but what you have to understand, like she said, that's our own thing, just like it's their own thing that I was finally able to more appropriately um, separate, not separate, Actually, it's the opposite of separation, which was interesting. I was, I allowed myself to integrate the fact that they can feel the way that they feel, but yet it doesn't have to, I no longer had to pick up the guilt, the, the being responsible for someone else's happiness. It was mm-hmm. as if I was able to lovingly and unconditionally accept their perspective and their experience without Mm -hmm. actually like I used to do embodying the emotion of the negative emotions behind that and the guilt and all the things that like saying I should have done this differently or I should not have followed my heart, you know, because I hurt someone else's feelings. So I think from that standpoint, I, we, are growing in that way that we're beginning to understand that we don't have to carry that, that, you know, the victim part of that with us that we can, you know, still stand and say, no, this is what's good for me. And I love you. And I understand how you feel, but I have to follow my heart. You know, I have to do what I need to do. And if you love me unconditionally, you would understand that. And you know, that kind of thing. So, yes. Thank you. Awesome. I was going to say the same thing as you in Temple. Sometimes you just got to cut it off and go away for a long time and then get, get your own personal freedom and then be able to deal with it later. Absolutely. Okay, we're going to, Temple's going to close us off now. Um, do you'd like to know who would like to do a blessing? Yeah, who would like to do a blessing? Um, if there's blessings in the YouTube chat, you can either type them out and I can do my best light language linguist to pronounce them. And then also anybody here, <laughs> anybody in the hangout? And you know I do. Yes, I was gonna volunteer you, Wendy, anyway. <laughs> Yay. Okay. So there's Wendy and
Wendy and Temple, would you like to give a blessing at the end, hon? Of course. No? I was hoping okay. Solar could pop in and he could do a blessing, but I'm not sure if he's able to do that. I can send him the link. Um, he's on the YouTube chat. Oh, oh who is that, hon? Uh, he's a he's an old friend of mine, but he has really beautiful oh. light language. He oh, said wow, he'd like man. to. He said he'd like to hear us speak some light language. I don't know if he can speak though. Okay. Okay, so I have Wendy Temple and Sapir. I'm. I'm no. I'm not gonna do it this time. Oh, I. Okay. <laughs> but thank okay. you. Okay. So Wendy, it's uh, me and you. So okay. take her All away. Right. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Alicia? No, I don't think. Okay, she can't hear me. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Okay. Okay. All right. Niyatoshe kili kiasa na te ele kaipasa na tala hama kora kaya lejere zemaniano kwa ki setesele le hama kwa pawa le shena te la ki i samalo kwa tabla kora kashete le ana plate ki kiata se na sele la malu kwa pale kisa. Matore she ima le kila baloko tala kura mai ki itishi me la maloko a etu koko a shana malia sata kia makoya shana mia uru sheke sa na ni a baloko tapa loko pagalia na na maloko shaywa ale kisete ma she na malora i maloko play keki a sama numai wa ku. Emora a i na na malaku tere ke luku pa shano tere buku hakoya le ki a sinatia le shua le malo ama e koru e to poluku tapa ki a tadali a na malaku e palo shona i le she le she le she le le ki pa kusa le polama la le a maluku pla ki te te ki a sama shua le she to te ambuku a le te ki ki a sana so ma ki a shaye i mi a i mi nata. Now I did get a lot of translations with that, you guys, but it would take me a while <laughs> to to explain everything that 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 they said. So I'm just gonna kind of leave it with all of you to absorb that. So mia koshe take ya. Thank you. That was beautiful, beautiful. It felt Hawaiian at some point, like a beautiful Hawaiian, beautiful breeze, fragrant flowers. <laughs> Well, that's very interesting. That's very synchronistic too, because um, the Hawaii is the heart chakra of the planet, and it's, so it's very yeah. interesting that you should say that. And I've had a lot of tropical um, synchronicities in my life over the last two weeks. So very interesting that you would use that very specific vision. <laughs> very interesting, Safira. Good pickup on that, girl. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, now Temple, can you hear me, honey? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. So what happened basically was right after we went live, anybody who joined into the uh, Google Hangouts, for whatever reason, I was not able to hear. So um, that's okay though, we worked through it. And uh, yeah. as long as you can prompt me, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> so Okay, so after your blessing, we're gonna close out. I want to say before you do that, honey, um, Temple, you you saved us. You saved me. You jumped in in a, a week's notice to be the host today. Thank you so much. And you did an it was just beautiful. Like you said at the beginning, Sophia, I got your back, and it was so nice just to let go and forget everything and just be. And so thank you so much. And you're you're beautiful in every way. Yes. Thank you very much. She does and a great I, job. I know. And I'd also like to thank Jim who sent me energy in the beginning because I sent him an SOS saying, I don't know if I'm going to make it because I didn't sleep. And for Michelle, who in uh, the beginning, in the middle, and the end, uh, sent her beautiful, powerful energy to all of us and to me. And thank you so much. Okay. Much love. And I will see you all soon. And we're going to end with Temple. Yes. Thank you. Um, Solo did say he was going to pop in and do a blessing as well, but I don't quite see him yet. Uh, and I okay. wouldn't be able to hear him at this point. I would have to log back in. So I will do my blessing and then um, we will go from there. Okay. 
Wushata sanakua halati do boja. Nata saka uno so moloto. Ganati auto sana is in newete. Kashua bulunu to bokashia nata. Nasanatiata. Go o shanasaya hana. Labia kota. Isini tiako bo ushutayana. Go o lataya sana ha kwahulu hona shiti. Nasiataya tua. Mukuanata, Ushutu, Sunotayana, Lasata, Shukuhu, Natayasa, Itia Hanakalua, Ko Omata, Yawakua, Shutu, Muasutu, Boakana Tasha, Nasayata, Asa Mukuata, Kuniataya, Ko O Takahana Sata, Yatala, Nana, Sia Muashanata, Yapukushuniti, Sienata, Malahana sana kuojinita bula taka asana asinewe tushu mata. Namaste. Namaste. Okay. <laughs> I got some imagery of, of the nails being like the concept was let the words that you are receiving, you know, from many different um Galactic neighbors, you know, from whatever words of wisdom, let them be kind of nailed into your heart to to actually do them. Something, something like that. I love that. <laughs> I love that. So important. So important. Ah, thank you. Okay. Right, so what we? Okay. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um. I was going to say what we could do is we can go offline and then we can still hear your friend when he comes in. Is that yeah. okay? Yeah, that's fine. I'm going to actually um, I'm going to actually log out and then log back in, but you guys will be just fine. And so if you guys want to join us, uh, we'll have the Hangout link available and you can just pop in and we can speak some light language or just kind of randomly talk about what's been going on. Um, we want to thank you for joining our Hukulo Saturday webinar uh, with host Safira. And we look forward to hearing from you guys. Don't forget to check out uh, hukulo.org to get all the information. And other than that, have a great Saturday. Uh, much love to everyone and blessings.